Hello everybody and welcome to another Power Hour session. Uh, we have a rivalry in the house. Uh, we have Coach Severin as well, Coach Rivalry myself. Uh, welcome. This is Power Hour. Is it number three already, boys? Uh, let me let's just do a quick sound check to make sure you guys can hear us all. Uh, yep, I'm good hello. to go. Good. I think they can hear you. And uh, um, sound is good. Yeah, perfect. Okay, Severin, yourself. Yeah. So I hope you all can hear me. So um, yeah, what a great move to the downside on the Nasdaq. That was um, pretty nice. So we just hit the previous weak point of control on the Nasdaq again. And what else? What I was actually looking at was a retest, or what I'm still looking at, to be fair, is a retest of the previous day value area low. So for now, I'm still out. So okay, no trades on my side. But um, yeah, I'm seeing if I can get a retest here because what I like about this one is that we struggled these five minute candles to break above the previous day value area low. Then we obviously had this very impulsive candle above, closing above. And yeah, if we get a retest, this is a zone I'm looking at. Okay, so the only thing I have to keep in mind for this area down here, um, we might not even get it, okay? But I know that rivalry is in a nice trade, right? So um, yeah. that's good nevertheless. But um, yeah, the stop loss for this one is quite large. So it is a 116 tick. So if we get down there, I have to check the lower time frames and see if that's worth it, if I can use it tighter and validation but um yeah if it's given we will be here and i can explain my thought process so perfect yeah, yeah. i've got your screen up rivalry there you can talk him yes. talk people for your trade yeah so we had a nice selling balance trapped at the low here on nasdaq you guys can see it right here and then igor even read it out to me i think he said he was like 300 something right yeah. i don't have the value but i know he has it 320 yeah. lots yeah that's that's a lot <laughs> so yeah so I have to reiterate, guys, that when there is a market entry, it's filling the opposite limit entry. So there's a, well, there was a market. There was, that was my tape flashing. Okay. It's oh, a more larger one. Let's squeeze. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was a buy that was yeah. bought there on, the, on my tape. But um, my NASDAQ entry is a little more aggressive just because I saw the 24 uh, EMA bounce right and my stop is just below this pivot right here right there so um it is aggressive because i didn't want it to be all the way to the bottom because it's just too far of a drop i don't mind adding more to this i just don't want to add to it like as a preset i would like um, if it does come back down and doesn't hit my stop and then it reclaims the 24 I'll, I'll just add to it and then i will be aiming to take one off off the local high but this one i'm going to be trailing the stop or maybe two 200 plus in profit is what i'll look for we'll see but my bigger runner will be the es i'm, I'm trying to see what the reaction is going to be like at the pd low because i'm not honestly i might even front run the pd low just because the market structure wise okay like you can maintain the five minute uh lower low right there so that's what i'm aiming for it'll as long as it maintains this five minute high this thing is still bearish right this this high right here that you guys can see i'll mark it but if it breaks that then you then you definitely want to be looking for the reversal like probably all the way even up to the vwap in my opinion you're now like medium time frame bullish like you will be looking for to gain acceptance back into value for a rotation because that's when you are assuming this lower portion is a deviation. Because this right here, this five minute candle essentially was the PD low sweep, but then they didn't have enough buy pressure, created a new low, and now you're curling back above. So this would classify as a deviation if you break market structure and you reclaim the PD low. So don't worry about your nice entry above, who cares what happens it is. Like this is technically bullish as of right now. Like, because the, the, structure like i've always said on the one minute one minute's kind of give you like that um what is that the i don't want to say signal but it'll give you <coughs> kind of what i what you'll notice happen all the time okay is that when the market is trending hard it'll be hugging the eight ema hard and then you'll get a couple of back tests on the 24 creating new lows right which is what you're seeing eventually it'll curl over and then it'll back test the 24. 
Now, this is when you want to look at delta, okay? And right now, delta is above the trend, right? So uh, shown above, which is why I entered after the bounce of the 24. I wanted to limit in, but unfortunately, I didn't get it. But which is why right now it's starting to reverse. What you want to see is a full-on reclaim of the PD low, okay? Because this is still bearish, right? Locally. Bu I mean, I'm sorry. Bullish locally, bearish medium time frame. Does that make sense? Yep. Keep an eye on the five minute one time frame just to see. Like, because uh, as of right now, this could start the one time frame because this is what you call like a distribution accumulation. And that's the break, the initiative candle, right? And then this is your pivot low, right? This is that pivot low of the initiative candle. And this could start the one time frame. Yeah, we just tried, we're just struggling here at these uh, 19s on the uh, uh, ES. Uh, I'm also on that long trade as well, uh, like uh, rivalries there. Um, but yeah, I just saw this uh, three times here. So a big order just to uh, kind of like eight through those highs. But I love the, uh, the, the the higher, higher structure here on the one minute. Can you see? It's so cool. Like high, high, yeah. high, 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 low. Uh, yeah, so that's a good uh, good trade. Uh, but yeah, back to you there, uh, Rivalry, with your charts. Yeah, I uh, closed the NQ trade because it was at 150. So I'm good locking in 150 and it gave myself a little bit of leeway because right now we're unrealized 225. So this thing keeps running, you know. You always want to pay yourself, right? And um, it was actually seven or nine. We were just talking right before where mm. talking about how he likes how I make $200, $300 here and there. And it's absolutely true. For me, that's how I'm comfortable trading. Because when I create that pad, like you guys know me as an aggressive trader. And I say that a lot. Sometimes I'll open 10 contracts. Mm. But I ain't opening 10 contracts if I have not made money that day. Unless it's like the juiciest setup in the world, which is highly unlikely, and I don't try to bank on something like that. I like to create myself like, I think like a uh, poker player, right? I am I play a lot of avid poker. And when you go in, let's say with $200, right? And you make some house money, like let's say three, four, five hundred dollars $500. I want to make sure I leave with $200 if it's a bad day, right? So if I gain myself $500, i am now playing with $500. Although that that's not really... Um, something I would teach someone newer because with the motions involved, you're probably going to start going on tilt. That's the whole definition of tilt. It actually came from gambling, right? Not necessarily trading, but in reality, trading is somewhat a form of gambling because it's risk to reward. You guys have to understand that when, when you're entering a trade, you are risking the money you're putting in, right? So what's important is that are you risking the money that you have in there or the fact that you want to be right? Because I don't personally care if I'm right or wrong. I just want to make money. <laughs> That's what I want to do. You know, it's, it's funny as you were saying that I was closing my uh, my trade for hundred and fifty dollars <throat> profit here because I can <laughs> see it struggling. So we've hit it once. We've uh, flipped it above it, but there's quite a lot of orders up here. So I prefer to take it, wait for more information. And here on the right, we can see that it's still one time framing higher on the one minute. I love that. Like uh, one, two, so many candles here, but it's kind of like struggling a little bit. You can see to the left. You have this big candle here, so it's kind of struggling here, uh, here with the uh, uh, 5320, uh, that is. Uh, so let's see if we can, um, you know, continue getting acceptance back inside value area uh, low. And then, uh, yep. yeah, go from there. But uh, so far, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to always take profits at these places. And it's fun, uh, like, hear you say that, because that's exactly what we were talking earlier. And, uh, yeah, it just, you know, you don't go broke uh, taking profits, right? Exactly. And, you know... Uh, the most important thing that I always go back to is my old job. Because it, it was hard because there was actually somebody who DM'd me, right? And they asked, hey, how are you able to pay yourself $100, $200 when you were used to making $15,000, $20,000 on like Bitcoin and things like that, right? And the easiest answer I can give you and the one that I really it set in my mind, right? And that's really what it takes is for you to tell yourself, okay? Is that... I used to work a government job. I made a little over six figures. Okay, sounds amazing, but really doesn't pay the bills here in Southern California, right? Um, that's four hundred dollars a day. Like you guys saw, there was a hundred and fifty dollar trade that I made since what? I think it's been nine minutes. Okay, and now we're at two twenty five. So it's essentially, if I close this trade and I close the other one, that's a hundred k a year, and that's me slaving away eight hours in another job. So, how, and then ask yourself another question. Part two of that question is this. How many times have you seen yourself in this profit, okay, only for it to get stopped? And then you, you ask yourself, oh, man, how does that happen more often 
than you saying, I should have let it run. Because for me, why I pay myself, I forgot to actually mention this, is because I've done the back statistics on myself, on my own analysis and entries, is that I find myself saying, um, I should have paid myself rather than I should have let it run. Now, if you're a person that says, I should have let it run more than you pay yourself, then maybe let trades run a little better. Because that's going to be de dependent on your entry and your risk, right? And your analysis. I'm a person that's very aggressive, so I have to pay myself aggressively. I like to enter on the one minute, so I'm targeting one minute um, market structure, okay? Uh, in relation to a higher time frame, such as the five or 30 minute. But, you know, it all boils down to, are you a person that, where you, when your stop loss gets hit, where you're saying I should have let that run or I should have paid myself. How, which one, which statement holds true more for you? I think that's the better question to ask. Yeah, I, I like what you just said there. And I think today was actually a good example. If you check the futures channel, what I was posting earlier today, cause um, I was doing the exact same. So um, paying yourself doesn't mean that um, after you have a nice profit pad, you can't allow yourself to keep those trades running a little bit longer. Cause I was actually, right at NY Open, I was just scalping in and out. All of them were trades, I would say less than a minute. And then I was seeing that good opportunity where we hit that P-shaped value area low on the NASDAQ. And I was like, yeah, that might be an intermediate low here on NASDAQ. So I was able to hold this trade. Okay, so my strategy is always going to be to lock those profits first, okay, to take those um, quick small scalps. And then once I'm confident with my profits, that's when I can think about um, leaving the trades open. Okay, that's just how I view things. Um, but on the ES, by the way, what I'm looking at, so if you can share my screen real quick, Igor. Yep, um, so uh, on the five minute, okay, we can see. Okay, yes, just, we yeah, it's take, going, yeah, it's going to you now. Okay. Yeah, so we have just taken the previous uh, five minute low here. That's nothing special yet. But what I'm actually looking at in terms of resistance is going to be the previous day low. Because if we look at that was Tuesday and Monday, we can see those lows are lining up. So this is going to be a nice previous demand zone. So I think in order to break that level, we need to see either a bit of a squeeze happening, but price is really slowing down here. Or um, else I expect to see some resistance here. It's, I mean, look at this. I hope you can see that. But um, if we look at Monday's value area low, it's at the exact same level as Tuesday's value area low. And so for today's value area low. So this area, yeah, we do need some, some buying pressure to break above this. Also with this previous demand. So it's definitely th something I'm looking at here. Okay. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's very interesting. So all three value area lows sitting at the same 25 level. <laughs> that is yeah. brilliant. Yeah, that is. And I mean, if we look at even that day before, so it was on Friday and that was actually the value area high of fr Friday. Look at this. So it's definitely a very um, important area. We can see that it acted as uh, demand and supply throughout the last year. F let's call it four days, right? So um yeah let's see how we react there if we get up to this level so um what we are currently doing by the way it's also something i'm noticing over and over again okay so we didn't see a good reaction on this naked value area low around 5317 and if you break below and you come back up this retest is always offering a little bit of res resistance if you don't get the nice bounce but it's nothing I would short, okay? So um, still, I would say in the, if you are in this um, local long trade, that's still okay. But for me, um, first area of interest is previous day low. Brilliant. I mean, on my screen here, like what the, the level you were just calling out there is at 53.18, uh, you're 17, you said? Oh, yeah, that is a previous uh, naked value area low. Yeah, right. 53.17. Yeah, because that's... Also on this that, buy imbalance. Yeah, because that's what I folded my trade just now. I watched it first break yeah. above it and then I move, put my stop there. And uh, it's interesting to see it like come, uh, like break structure of those one minute slows. It broke structure, came back, and that's exactly what it back tested uh, for a little, um, you know, scalp down to the downside. But obviously, I didn't take this. Um, but that's a nice move. I, I love to see that nice uh, SR flip. Well, actually, it would have been a nice trade, as you can see there. Uh, did you yeah, yeah. Um, jump, jump yeah, out of your trade? Sure. Are you still uh, on your trade? No, I, I closed it and I'm now short. Okay, good. That was quick. Quick fingers. <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm seeing the if 
uh, the five minute right now, and, and I'm going to self invalidate here the five minute and just engulf that last move. Yes. It so, did. <laughs> um, so that's what, right when I saw that, I closed the long, but this is going to be a self invalidation. I want to see where this five minute breaks this next one that's developing mm -hmm. because it can't break this. Um, like, I'll give it to like the 50 ish. If it starts building value above that 50 of that candle, this is kind of, this is probably just a liquidity grab and it's just going to move higher. Yeah, it looks like it so far, to be honest. Um, it literally came down to kiss the uh, the 50 SMA on both charts, um, uh, NQ and ES, uh, down here with that move. But yeah, we were watching that 17, 18 level here, the uh, the SR flip, and it was really nice to see it like granularly here on a low time frame. Um, but let's see, we've broken our rate to the high at 17. Um, so yeah, this looks okay for more upside. We've got quite a lot of liquidity above, so I might go with the long uh, scalp here. Uh, let me just see, but it's a little bit late now, uh, commentating. But yeah, that's a nice, a nice uh, little SR flip there with the uh, 50 SMA. Yeah, that's starting to break that trend. Yeah. So can you like... go to my um, chart uh, thing real fast? I want to explain to people like how, when you should get out of a trade, right? Yeah. So yours is up. Uh, yeah. yeah yours so is up. when you look at the structure, right, you see the uptrend on the five minute. Okay. So this is your last move right here. This bearish engulfing engulfed this last move. So what you're expecting, what I'm thinking right now is I'm an initiative trader right now, right? And hold on, let me place a stop so I'm not like completely destroyed on this move. But um, as an initiative trader, okay, you are you are assuming, okay, remember that's the key here, that you are going to hold this higher, uh, this pivot high right here, right here, because that you are thinking ahead that the five minute structure is going to start to downtrend taking out these lows at the very least okay so what's important is that once that structure gets broken don't short anymore because what i've seen people do is that a structure like that breaks and they're being initiative and they're just assuming oh it'll come back down oh i'll break even no get out get out because it's done the move is done and they tried and they couldn't do it right now it's still okay for me right because i've placed my stop already there is a slight chance right now i'm I'm kind of against the trend because their opportunity to drop the move was right here okay they still have it right because as long as it's holding that high that's okay for me does that make sense does everyone understand that now even though it's starting to come back in my favor it's still not over yet. What's important is where this five minute closes. If this five minute closes like an indecisive candle, then it's still a 50 50 trade. But if it closes bearish, now I'm, I feel that as if I'm with the trend, then where I can defend that five minute high, I can add another position if I choose to. My local levels that I'll be targeting would be a front run of this area right here, okay? Which it was already hit, to be honest. But after that, you can hit the fair value gap down here and then the local low. That's that's how you scout these moves, because I feel like I said many times I have to keep saying it, that people are going to marry trades, keep adding just so they can break out even. So right now, the, it's OK. Let's see where this closes. OK, because if this closes down here, OK, now I know there's no reason to take out this high. There's absolutely no reason. The only time uh, take that with a grain of salt, there's no reason to take out this high unless Okay, you bounce from let's say a fair value gap, which is already hitting, which I probably should have TP'd, but that's okay. Let's TP right here. So now I'm here TPing the fair value gap. Now I'm good. Okay, let's see if it keeps going. Now, if let's say you had another runner, right? That's a good now trade. Now it's, it. it's cutting through the fair value gap. Okay, so right now it's going really, really bad. So that's yeah. a great example right here of being an initiative trader. Okay, so that doesn't always work like um, all the time, right? Because you may be. You may have like gone in this trade and then you're like, oh my gosh, should I get out? I don't know what to do. No, my plan was defend the five minute high. And that's exactly what it did. Now, can we jump on this trend? Absolutely. What you're going to do now is wait for this five minute, okay, and get a retrace. Okay. The retrace that you want to do is now you're going to follow the EMAs. The EMA is now here on the one minute. Okay. So you're going to see where this is. You want to, if you want to go really aggressive on the, on the eight, you can. But personally for me, I'll, I'll wait for the 24. Now, if hit the 24 hits, it's going to take out the local low if it rejects from here. Okay, so we can do that. Let's see how the buyback is. Looks pretty strong, yeah. but I want want to. You don't want to limit here. Okay, you don't want to. What's best right now is 
you get a one minute pivot and then you're going to be an initiative trader once again that you are assuming that this five minute high is going to hold right here to maintain the one time frame <laughs> like this it cannot break that high like that okay so it can go anywhere above here so i don't care where it goes right now it can wake all the way above on the one minute perfectly fine as long as it closes back below the 24 and it maintains the five minute now your probability is that you're going to take out the low right now it's hitting the eight ema on the five minute and the one minute so this is why you're getting some sort of sell pressure it's still the buyback is still relatively strong so i want to wait you can be initiative here again, but like I said, if you short here, where's your stop going to be? It's got to be all the way up there, all the way up here, like right here, all the way up here. Why up here and not the other one? That's because this five minute has not closed yet, right? And you also don't have a pivot point as a point of reference on the one minute because none of these can be used as a reference point for a swing high on the one minute, right? None of them. You have to wait for it to give you a clear signal. Like stars aligning would be a back test of the of the delta trend and also the 24 EMA close back to below. Okay, so just wait. So you got to be patient. <laughs> I love we'll that. do it again. There's three minutes left, so anything can happen in three minutes. Max pain is it closes all the way down there and you miss the trade. So mm -hmm. what? Wait for another one. You know, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's looking so good though for the uh, for the bulls. If the bulls took that long, because we literally bounced from the seven five. Um, oh, yeah. both on the NQ and ES um, so that's uh, kind of yeah. uh, interesting there and we literally bounced from the 7 phase straight into the 7-5 uh, on the opposite end that's kind of funny uh, there's a little tug of war going on here now I want to see where this one minute closes if it closes up here right there just where it's at right now I'll short and I'll put the stop above but if it starts dropping lower I might miss the move because it's not a bearish close for me. You see how it's a still of a fairly strong, I mean, it's a fairly bullish wick still. This is not a bearish wick at all. Bearish wick would be very, very long, right? So let's see. If it yeah. closes above, I ain't entering. I got to wait for the five minute. So this is a this is the challenge for most people because they'll see this. Oh my God, it's, it's starting to drop, but there's still two minutes left on the five minute. That five minute can completely wipe out that entire move. You're not 100% sure. Right now, it's indecision for me. This looks like indecision. So I would rather wait for the, the five minute to close. And now look at the five minute. It has to maintain that high on that second candle. This one, the one originally, right? Now, if that closes back under the, the 24 bearishly right here, that'll look good for me. But right now, it's still very, very strong. This is how you give yourself invalidations, right? This is the nice things about five minute mm -hmm. because it's super clear. The five minute is like one of the best things that you can trade when it comes to a local trend. A lot of people trade the one minute because probably they see Severin and myself and Igor do it. You know, like, <laughs> but we always look at the other time frames. You cannot get yeah. chopped up on this thing. This thing will chop you up. Like, I, I'm looking at the one minute now and I'm getting mixed signals, but I'm always referring back to the five, right? Yeah. So now five is looking bullish. You see what I'm saying? Like there was two minutes yeah. left. It looked good for a lower high, but now it's starting to engulf that last move. But but that's actually so uh, important what you just said there, because um, even though my, most of my entries are based off the one minute on both ES and NASDAQ, I'm, as much as I look on the one minute, you might not always see that, but I'm placing as much emphasis on the 30 and 15 minute time frame as well. So th those are on my right screen, right? But I'm always checking these charts as well. That is where I'm actually getting most of my information or my context for where, where to look for these trades, okay? So um, this is some t yeah, something I'm seeing over and over again where people lose uh, sight of the bigger picture, okay? So um, it's always going to be medium-term time frame for your context, for your good probability trades, and then you drop down some time frames to actually find an entry, okay? But it's not very often that I just stare at the one minute and try to find an entry there. I always have to know what's happening on the higher time frames. You can do that for these aggressive scalp trades, but... Um, yeah, it's not as important as the higher time frames. Oh yeah, 100%. Yep. I love looking at the 30 minute. I mean, the 30 minute just gives you so much oh, context. Yeah. Like 
especially when you pull the um, uh, the 50 SMA and you just leave it there. It just gives you that confidence to go with a higher time frame trend. Um, I mean, like over the past few uh, weeks, the trend has been up and this 50, every time price comes down to it, especially on the NQ, you always have a nice reaction. I'm not saying just buy it. I'm saying like, just look at the reaction because there's always a bit of time to you know, jump back in. Um, but for example, a couple of days ago, you didn't really have the time. You literally hit it and it just jumped from it and i was like wow like it just one time framed uh during the london session higher and higher and higher and i was like wow like if you were just waiting for the back test no chance it was just that strong uh, i think that was on tuesday um so yeah like the 50 oh, yeah. sma on a 30 minute is really really powerful um i love that 50 sma uh one minute 50 minutes uh, it doesn't matter i mean like uh this is the one minute and you can see like the the quick move back below and an instant rebought back and uh, it's trying to obviously stay above it and you can see it just curling over now um so yeah this could be a little rounding uh uh, bottom here formation it's half past uh eight my time so we do have another 30 minutes uh coming up um the market is obviously a little bit negative today now we have on delta 4000 negative on the enq and two and a half well nearly 3k there on the uh, es so we're outside value as well for the day as you can see here so i'm just going to move this to the right so you can see a little bit better so we're outside value so these are never the best places <clears throat> i mean you can it's okay to short scalp like uh, rivalry was saying but you have to be quick with those profits um but yeah when when you know you're outside value you know you've run so far down um you know it's it's always good to be aware that uh, no, this could snap back inside and very quickly. Um, so yeah, I mean, higher time frame is always the best place to look. But obviously, down on these one minute time frames, you can then see the formation of those, you know, swing lows, swing highs uh, being formed. So yeah, a lot of uh, I'm not information for a whole lot here. I'm just gonna probably get a, like a hundred, hundred fifty on this move. So so all the trades I've taken right now, they're five hundred seventy five dollars minus the four dollar fees per contract, right? So now I have a little bit of wiggle room to play with. This stop right here is about three hundred dollars. Actually, let me look. It's three, three. No, no, two. Well, what is that? No, two eighty-seven. So I'm not obviously going to allow myself to get hit up there. Where's my? Where would my invalidation be? Let's see if you guys would know. So I'm. I already told you guys what I was looking for. What would be my invalidation? My invalidation obviously would be a break of this market structure on this candle. Okay, that would be a five-minute close above. Okay, so this is a little more of an aggressive trade, but I don't mind being aggressive up here only because I've won a few few trades and I'm looking for a micro pullback. I am still bullish for more upside, but I'm looking for a micro pullback only because the delta on the ES is now going bearish. Okay, So this is a very strong uptrend. And if you can see it on the footprint as well, that you have a lot of buys at the highs and it was instantly wiped out. Right there, you had 600 right here, 300, 224, 293, 292, and then you got wiped out. Now you're getting a nice pushback and you're not seeing any bias. So for me, I'm looking for a micro pullback. If I get more, great. Um, there's two ways I can do this. I can either look for a, a fixed position to add on to my winner, meaning like, let's say 100 bucks, 150, I'm good to add on to my already winning day. Or I can trail my stop because there, this does have the potential to reverse because like i said down that delta okay because you don't want to fight delta okay um although i am like i said locally looking higher i can see this pulling back right now you're seeing it right now you're seeing the bearish delta coming in because that last push didn't make a new high delta made a lower low i mean lower high and also price made a lower high so that means there is a wall here that does, i don't need to see okay i don't need to know that there's a wall there to know that there's a wall there right well, now there's a huge buy. Somebody's trying to reverse us, okay? But at the same time, that huge buy is filling a limit cell, right? So it's now a toss-up. So I have to be very, very careful where I put this. I need to see where the next five-minute candle is, okay? So when that, if that five-minute candle closes above, then I'm probably like anywhere bu above that line that I just drew, I'm just going to cut my losses because I don't need this to get hit. Does that make sense? yeah it, it does that. to me yeah uh, as soon as i saw that order there i pulled a quick long here so my risk is only 60 bucks uh, and i'm going for the highs now uh, just because i saw that order, let me just move it on to my so i saw yeah, the order coming good. in yeah that's quite a good a big order so as soon as i would kind of like saw that just uh, back in into the move let's see if we can get that through the 20 level above 
uh, back to who wants to commentate now. So. Break that wall for me. <clears throat> I can see it there on the tape. You know, I might get out. V risk is only a hundred dollars. Yeah, you still only because the Nasdaq is already breaking market structure. <laughs> so that that's a, that's a fair value gap trade for any of those guys. Look, you know that trade fair value gaps. That was a great fair value gap trade on the at the low there, right on the seven five as Igor mentioned. Yeah, I'm just watching here because yeah, it's not getting much follow through though. It's a little bit slow above the high. There you go, a couple more buys there. Because if we can get out of this 20s, oh, there you go. So the, the move through the 20s, if we can get out of here, uh, we've got a little bit of room to the, that, to the upside. Uh, so I'm just going to hold on to this. I'm going to actually leave. Uh, we're on to VWAP as well, uh, coming up. Uh, no, actually not yet. Mm, big order coming out here at the 20s. Been here before. I might just move my stop higher to the uh, 18 level. Okay, just locking $87 and just going to trail this. I can see room all the way up to 95 on the NQ. And that's quite far away. So let's see. That's another 175 there. So I'm going to move my stop further up. There's no much liquidity below apart from the 20s. So if they flip these 20s here, I want to be out. So I'm going to leave at 19.75 looking for the next one yeah there you go so it's breaking through uh i'll keep it below i'll, I'll keep at 1975 see if they can hold on to the structure see that's why i love the tape i don't know if you guys heard that sound right did you guys hear that sound mm -hmm. yeah okay because that was my tape flashing so that is super helpful <laughs> oh wow look at <laughs> that so, always looking at it right what? so that's there there goes the move. Whoa, what a trade. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. I hope you're enjoying that. There you go. So we're coming all the way. 32, and I'm happy to lock $475. I'm out. Wow. That was a nice, nice one. <laughs> that was a nice trade there. And look at yeah, that. That was, the, that, that was the squeeze I was talking about. That is what we needed to break that level. So, um, Welcome to Power Hour. <laughs> yep. See, look what happened as soon as you broke that. Remember that like I said there's a wall there. Mm -hmm. What happened right when we <clears throat> broke it? Initiative candle. Look, if you look Ooh. at the imbalance right here on my, I don't know if they can see my screen yet. Uh, right. Yeah. I'll put yeah, it's up right there. You see that imbalance? That is when the tape, when the uh, the you guys heard that sound for the tape. Yeah. That is somebody literally muscling through that wall, right? So as soon as that came in, I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do this because the the nq already broke market structure that so that tells me this is likely leading and now you have the buy pressure to support the break and as soon as the break happened now you have an initiative candle yeah all the way to the 100 percent. like reading the tape is so important this is why i have the tape on the right and then i have obviously the level two the liquidity map here on the on the left and obviously the dom in the middle the dom i'm using less and less uh, i just love the profit and loss um <laughs> uh, feature here on the left i like that um it's nice to always like look at that big uh round number and just fold it there um but you know it's not needed um but yeah the time in sales is good because you can either do it with the uh, little uh um, exclamation mark here the, the information and then hover over the uh, the orders and you can see it that way uh, or just keep an eye on the tape there they'll come through very well you can see it on the uh, I, I prefer to look at the es um um but yeah like uh really 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 nice to have all of this uh sort of like tape reading confluences etc um so that's um a really nice good trade there um yeah that was a uh, 472 dollars uh, uh profit and the one before so was, was 150 was that's what I was saying earlier. Like, I don't care if I'm wrong. I, I, actually, I like money more than I'm wrong, right or wrong. Like, there was no point in me leaving a, a stop loss there just to say, well, I need to be right on this trade. No, you're, I was wrong. You know, something came in on the market to already tell me, hey, get out. Like, I want to be super clear on a lot of things, okay? You're not going to always see it, and that's perfectly fine. That's going to take time. But I truly believe over 90% of your entries give you enough signal on this data to tell you whether or not you're more likely wrong or right. And if you're not listening to them because you want to be right or you don't want to lose money because you want to break even, you know, like going red, 
this is not the profession for you. You have to be okay losing some to make some. Yeah. Like I said, business. It's like a business, right? Like I say it all the time. Like if you go into business right now, you're like, I know Igor has employees, you know, like I have employees, like I got to pay them, right? That's money lost. <laughs> you know, like I'm losing, like, let's say you go to a restaurant and then um, one of the customers break a uh, a dish or something like, or they complain about their food and you give them, you comp them a free meal. That's a loss. That's a stop loss. Okay. You're wrong. You know, so this is the exact same concept. Be okay with being wrong, you know, like, and if you are literally adding to that wrong position, it's like arguing with the customer. Hey, you're like, I don't, you got to pay for this. It's kind of like that. It's, it's not, it's counterintuitive to the goal, you know? A hundred percent. Um, it's a uh, running a business is very much like that. You, you have bad mumps and you have good mumps, but regardless, um, of the good or bad, your employees need to get paid. So cash flow, cash flow is your risk management tool and uh, you need to have it. You need to have it for those, uh, you know, uh, bad periods that you go through as a business. Um, uh, but yeah, just going back to this trade now, how crucial it is to be able to read this as well. Like um, um, I know obviously you were trying for that scalp short, but it was just how you manage it. Really, really good, you know, efficient, you know, didn't work out straight away, but obviously you had your reasons. You had that uh, engulfing as well there, the, the, the bearish engulfing candle, like, and it's very much like it either works or it doesn't. And you had your risk and plan, you had everything uh, ready and uh, yeah, perfect. Um, but then like, like I was saying down here, you've got the, um, um, you know, price is completely outside of value. So, you know, I'm a little bit more like, okay, if we can reclaim that 50, which we did here on the one minute, that's why I love this 50, because it just gives you a little bit more kind of like, it's it's in between the higher time frame, lower time frame on the one minute. And uh, seeing this here and the, the, the instant buyback, and obviously, let me just pull a fib here and you can see what I was looking at the time. So from the low that we made earlier, all the way to the high obviously this was uh, the high prior but all the way to the high look at that we came all the way down to that three uh, 53 10 okay so that's really nice support last point of like easy invalidation like so close to the lows so it's like a cheap trade um and then you obviously you look you look for the opposite end so on this chart the opposite end comes in at 32 okay so we're not quite there yet and i wouldn't be would not be surprised if we trade there so there's another long trade there potential later but look at the nq as well same thing so from low all the way to the high you come down to the seven five and boom so 95 will be the target uh which is the uh what's that uh 98 is that previous day low what's 98 I need to put the names on here what is that uh show later 78 78 is previous day low oh yeah there you go 98 okay so i do have something here what is that yeah, this is why I need to put the names on this. 98 is daily open. Oh, daily open. That's it. It's the open. So, yeah, we do have 98 and 95 as uh, the, the, the symmetrical kind of like swing for this move. So it's kind of nice. I like to see those confluences. It gives me a bit more uh, sort of like confidence going into the trades. And obviously, when you see the tape reading, like those orders coming in and uh, Rivalry saw that and he was out and uh, that's tape reading. So, no, well done. It's very good. Can you switch to my chart real quick? Yep, I want to talk it. over because I know a lot of people do this. <laughs> That's why I want to cover it. So when you see a move like this and you're starting to see a rejection here on the VWAP, right? And then on the one minute, it looks like it's starting to curl over. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to short, right? Is it a good short? And the answer is yes and no. Okay. Because it's going to be dependent on your plan. And I'm going to talk about both ways. <laughs> you guys can say that this is a yes and a no. If it's a, it's a, it's a yes only if where are you invalidated is it the local high because i wouldn't do the local high because it could still wick and still be a valid short what you have to look for is the structure on the five and 30 minute okay so on the 30 minute it is defending on the es at the very least the 30 minute high number two okay um if you start closing five minutes above these demands i'm sorry supply zones on the es and nasdaq that's when you can kind of say you are starting to be invalidated why is it still a bad short trade if you're only looking at the one minute because you're shorting against an initiative candle right here on the five minute that's like literally a bullish move to the upside right so this essentially could just be a micro pullback which it looks like it's starting to pull back on the pd low for another long so how can you 
properly fade this move is what people are always asking. Like, how do you know which way? You're not going to know. You're going to, what you're going to do is plan both directions and act accordingly. That is the key. So you're already looking two ways. Okay. One way would be what? Okay. So if this is going to break to the upside, then you have to say, okay, it cannot break the PD low on the one minute, like what you're seeing right now. So if it starts one time framing on the one minute, the likelihood of taking out the high is going to be likely. So that means you don't go on a retest short. Number two, if it is going to take out the low, what are you going to do now? Then you're likely going to create a lower high, which you've already done on both candles. Okay. And then on this third candle, it's going to maintain that five minute one time frame because right now it's starting to distribute accumulate. Okay. You cannot just sniper entry. This is not Bitcoin. Okay, you don't just see SFP enter. Doesn't work like that. Okay. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. I mean, you can, but you're set essentially guessing. Yeah. Okay. And you don't want to guess on an asset like this because it's it moves so technical. That's why, right? Um, with Bitcoin, I like doing that just because you know you can get easy profits and it moves so volatile at, at one point, like right, other it moves volatile, then it dies, right? That's that's what it does. But with the ES and, and NQ, it's very technical. Like you can wait. Like you have the ability to wait. And if you miss the move, let's say this thing starts dunking hard, like you're already dunking hard, right? And then I'll even show you, hopefully it does right now. So we, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, if it does dunk hard, then you understand, okay, I understand that that is now the 30 minute being defended and I can join in on the moving averages on the one minute because it's a very strong move. But it's not, but you got to give it time because I feel like people are just so fixated on that local high, local bottom entry that they just want the best position so they can just like chill out and, you know, trade and chill, you know. But it's in reality, you're that is not the most ideal conditions when you're trading. The most ideal condition, like there you go, you're starting to get a buy imbalance right now on the tape because they want to hold this position for a higher high, right? Which is, exactly what it's trying to do like on the one minute it's holding the 24 which are responsive traders right and it's also going to likely try to protect this low this might be your pivot on the five minute after this initiative move okay kind of like creating that fair value gap right because that could be the next fair value gap later on okay that's exactly how fair value gap theories are are created you have an initiative candle you get a pullback and you find that pivot on that initiative candle right and then that creates that fair value gap for a retest later or a tp later right so just give yourself time there's no absolutely no reason to uh, um get initiative unless you know why you're being initiative so if you were initiative on that first touch of that vwap it's not the worst trade in the world but where are you wrong? That I want to keep slamming that in into your guys' head, right? Because more often than not, even though this is starting to play out as a good move, you will see, especially on news events, like that one hour right before New York, those, those types of news events, you'll get that really impulsive move to, uh, to the upside or downside. And then you get a slight rejection. And then you think that's the, the reversal trade of the century, right? Only for it to be retraced back later. Okay, you have to wait for the candle closes and you have to wait for the the move to um, reveal itself right now. It's still technically locally bullish. Why? Because we have not gained acceptance back because you this could just be a classified as a deviation to the VWAP to go back inside value, which is starting to do now. Now it's a 30 minute candle that is closing very bearish. I am now looking for a short. So if I get a pullback at the overnight low, I'm going in and it's now aligning with the 24 and eight. Now I understand where should this not be closing above this five minute candle right here, this five minute candle right here, those two five minute candles, it should not be closing above there if I'm going to enter an aggressive. Now, if it starts to close above that, it's going to be dependent on your Delta reading because you can make it max pain all the way above, but just too far in my opinion. Now you can miss this move completely. And that's perfectly fine. And I'm fine with that because when you wait for opportunities such as the so one I'm talking one about, right, about now, right now, you will, you in will. fact, find an opportunity to jump in and it's going to work more often than it doesn't. So be okay by with this. By the way, I um, that was a great explanation. I myself did take the short trade, by the way. So you can see that, Igor, if you go over to my screen. So I'm yeah. going to short trade on the ES here. 
um, a take profit one is hit for me. So I'm just leaving mm -hmm. this running. And yeah, I would say Rivalry explained that very well. But for me, it was an entry because I was looking at this area. Okay, so the way I was looking at this was, yes, we hit the weekly open. We saw a lower high to be put in. We failed to hold this previous that was the previous demand zone okay price failed to regain that as demand and on the break below that was even a breakout trade i don't do that very often okay but i was um, okay with giving myself a bit of room here i targeted the first that was this one here targeted the first um, area of supply as my take profit one sometimes i'm going for these um, breakout trades but only if i have a very good and well-defined plan Okay, so for me that was okay. Um, and yeah, during uh, showing that trade, I missed this long here on NASDAQ because that was actually something I was looking at next. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this is, the, this is um, the previous supply on NASDAQ. It is the 50 SMA. Let me see. I could counter myself here. What is Apple Microsoft doing? I'm checking this real quick. See if I'm still interested yeah, in this yeah, one. I'm giving it some time here. Giving it some time. I want to see, yes, reclaim at least the 20 uh, again uh, for any longs because so far it's uh, a nice a little uh, down structure now. Uh, we've just printed the uh, the low of the M period um, uh, candle, 30-minute uh, period, and obviously we can't ignore the fact that we met, left quite a nice, uh, obviously, uh, upper wick. So we're back down oh, at yeah. the open. We're right at the open of this M period candle. We've only got five lots at the, the low. We've literally just done that. Uh, so reclaiming this 20 now, let me just zoom in here. So coming back above the 20 is kind of like, okay, this could be the low. Uh, however, failing that, and we'll uh, probably see the 305s down there. Uh, so if you're still short, uh, not financial advice, maybe try and see what happens here at the 20 uh, because you can flip that. Obviously, I didn't take the short, but that was a really nice one indeed. So well done, mate. Back to you. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's not too much to update here, actually. So the way I would manage this trade, since I already locked one, I would uh, check the 50 SMA here, see if we took, uh, take that local low once more. So if we do, I'm going to trail my stop loss at least a little bit lower. Because um, I really don't want to see the 50 SMA to be claimed again, especially given the fact that the Nasdaq is um, currently at support here at this at this previous supply. Okay, always looking at correlations for ESA Nasdaq, so the Nasdaq might be leading. Sometimes, if we see a nice run on Nasdaq, for example, it's going to be a very risky play to stay in that short trade on ES. Right, so. Um, yeah, let's see. But um, overall, I would say yeah. Let's actually think about this so if we take these lows once more what's actually stopping price from seeing a bigger move to the downside because there's not too much support down there mm -hmm. what's the liquidity map doing uh well we have 305 uh we're looking at 305 as 305, a yeah, yeah 305 for an initial support yeah. and below that we got uh 288 obviously the big round number of uh, 300 uh, but don't we have nvidia earnings after the bell yes we do yeah. they? we okay. do yeah yeah, we might just not get that, but it will be interesting to see. I mean, because um, I heard the rumors that um, it was kind of like bullish. Um, so, what's the uh, what's uh, what's it trading at the moment? Let me open uh, the chart. What's, I have, I have TPs at one k. <laughs> well, I think we might get there. So we're trading at. Uh, 947, 950. Yeah, we're already moving higher, actually. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't want to. By the way, pardon? targeting the local. You're short? Yes. Okay, I'm going to. Thank you. Take it over to your chart there as well. Seven. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Right, really? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Um, this is an initiative because I'm assuming that five minute is going to close protecting that previous one. Yeah, you've got a clear invalidation there. Like I said, um, I mean, at least on the yes, flipping that 20 makes me a little bit more bullish. Uh, remaining below nice. that make me makes me a little bit more bearish as well. So, um, yeah, nice one, boys. I, I like that we've just taken the one minute lows here on ES. So I would like to see the NASDAQ following along because we do have a bit of a note here at 36. Giving, now seeing a bit of a push down. Um, yeah, that's good for the short trade, actually. Um, yeah, Boom. that is it. That's Ooh, 
I'm so, trailing. Did you guys, um, did you guys stop. Yeah. Wait, wait, up four hundred and twelve dollars now. So for fifty. I love this. But do you guys see like uh, everyone watching? Did you guys understand like they, it's that wasn't a late entry? That was a confirmed. Mm -hmm. I was comfortable with that short. You see, you just gotta wait. Like sometimes you will, in fact, get miss the best entry, right? Now remember, I I did see Trade Wins' uh, message. He he trades every single reversal. That's fine. Okay, I don't want to discourage you guys from waiting each time. Actually, let me take that back. If you're a newer trader, absolutely wait. Okay, I think you should wait and learn how to trade with the trend. I think that is the easiest way to learn how to trade. Now, once you are starting to be seasoned and you know what to look for. Then you can get aggressive. Then you can be an initiative trader. You should always be a responsive trader if you're learning because there's clear invalidations. You know where the price is going. You know where you're wrong. If you are an initiative trader, like you may not, you're trying to look ahead, think three steps ahead. Okay. That's what you got to do in both directions. Okay. If you're going to be initiative, you have to know where you're wrong. So that was a good example where Severin was an initiative trader because he had a clear invalidation and I wanted to be a responsive trader. Okay. And then you got the bearish move, you got the confirmation. Now I know where I'm going to be wrong. I entered on the back test up to 24, took out the local low because I entered what? One minute market structure, targeting one minute market structure. I had entered on the one minute, targeting one minute market structure. Yes, if I could have let it run much further, that's perfectly fine. Just so you know, I'm up 700. So just know that. Okay. So it does stack up. And this is what, 51 minutes now? Now imagine like a whole, like, Day. three four five hours of trading you know yeah that was such a great example of having a different um execution type style but um Realizing. yeah giving the same result. perfect man what a what a power hour that is so nice <laughs> no power i mean i was just thinking about that like i'm up like six hundred dollars you're up uh five what, what are you up to? 400 400 yeah, that's pretty on this uh, last hour so oh, yeah. um i would not even use this yeah. I should drop that meme. And they're all different entries too. Yeah. You know, that's that's really what's important. Yeah, exactly. Oh, brilliant. Now look at that 30 minute. Look how ugly that is. Yeah. It's eight yeah. minutes left. We've printed both sides of the candle now. So we opened right in the middle there at 19. And then we went all the way to 29.30 and it came all the way back down to 11. So we kind of like in the middle now, like, you know, we've done both sides now. So what's it going to be? Uh, the low, it looks a bit more probable now, to be honest, because we, uh, we've done already like the upside. Uh, we've got what uh, seven minutes left. On, uh, the liquidity on starting ES, to build. Yeah, below. On on the S, by the way, we do have a single print at five thousand three hundred and three, lining up with the previous low, lining up with previous supply. So this is what I'm looking at next for if we break the lows. Okay, yeah. and this is now one of the scenarios where I'm like, okay. I did catch a trade in between here. Is it really, it doesn't make sense for me personally, given the results I had today to now um, force a trade in here. Uh, for me, my type of style, uh, my type um, or style of trading, I would say no, not really um, a good place to look for a trade. I wanna see a break of the lows next for me to be interested in the next trade. Okay, that's just all about my, trading style and my patience okay so um inside here i did catch a good or i caught a good trade but um, no need to look for another one to be to be honest yeah no good stuff i liked your level there the single print so at that single yeah. print that Severin is uh, pointing out you have the um, let me zoom in so you have the single print sitting exactly at five three zero well I'll call it zero four i'm using tick uh, tick two on this but you also right at the initial balance high there so that's really nice it's a really nice um, target for a short, should we drop. Um, obviously, we're still flirting with this end period back up to the open now. So this open here at 1850, it's going to be a telltale and we already can see some orders building there. We're going to have extra confluence there with the 50 SMA. So let's see, but there's come, there's a lot of bid support here coming into the, to the fold. So let's see what happens there. This could get a very interesting indeed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're back up to it. There you go, 19, and they've just filled this order. There. 
And this is also why we, why, why we have to take profits. So imagine Rivalry and myself were still aiming for the lows. So this would then end in a stop at break even. Ooh, that's a nice move. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you there. That's really yeah. look at that. As soon as they blasted through that 19 level, which is the open of the candle, boom. Uh, wow, this uh, this <laughs> insane. I love check, your daily check low there. Five, you see the imbalance on the five? There's a buy imbalance on the NASDAQ and it closed above and that's when you got that spike. Okay, switching to your screen there if you want to sh uh, share. Yeah, right there. Brilliant. As soon as it closed, it started to fly. Yeah. Fusion balance. Yeah, they're maintaining that nice uh, higher lows down there. Look at that. One, mm -hmm. two, three. This is no, This is looking... What's NVIDIA doing again? Let me take a look at NVIDIA. Yeah, NVIDIA is at 50 again. Uh, so NVIDIA is okay. rallying. Uh, real quick, uh, am I still on my screen? Yeah, got you there. I want everyone to look at the 30-minute lows. You see how important looking at 30-minute is important as well? And here's the NQ one. So is that still one time frame? So those 30-minute lows are still being protected. So super, super important. That, now also, on the flip side of that, we said earlier, I think like three minutes ago, hey, man, that 30-minute candle is looking ugly. Look what it looks like now. Looking bullish. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So super important to always look at those five minutes, those 30 minutes, where those are looking at. Like, So for instance, on the same structure, I'm looking at this high, okay? And we're already breaking this high, so we have to look up to here. I mean, technically, you could say this is a sweep as long as this maintains, but if this keeps going, right and this breaks i wouldn't even try looking at the poc unless there's a low time frame change on the five minute but right here was a great example as price is falling down right you don't you need to see this break oops i was marking it on the wrong one Mark it on the wrong right here this low right here as this was coming down you needed to break these lows right there so this was looking bearish earlier, but this maintained these lows. Same thing on the NASDAQ, no different. Those lows were being held. I'm wondering if we're so, going to backtest those 95s on the NQ. I wonder if that's what they're trying to do now. It's an interesting area, yeah. Yeah, it just looks somewhat a little bit... But yeah, we've run too fast now. So here is the place where you shouldn't take it long. <laughs> You'd have to no, go with no, the break. No. But yeah, no, it's it's yeah, it's tempting. But uh, well, for me, for me, it's the ninety on Nasdaq, which is looking key. Ninety. Ninety. Yeah, we do have a stacked sell imbalance on the previous demand at ninety seven ninety. Yeah. Now this uh, looks somewhat good. Yeah, you got some. Uh, yeah, it broke all those uh, thirty-minute lows. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, we've uh, we've had a good run. Let's not spoil it. Nvidia <laughs> <laughs> okay, earnings. When is that? Is that like right after the uh, close? I I'm not quite sure. Let's have a look at the uh, financial juice, uh, men. Uh, do, 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 do. So we have. Mm. Where am I? Do they do you want to miss the uh, price action here? 1921. Hmm. Doesn't say. Yeah, we're breaking out of that 25s. So we're all flat. Yep. Okay. Let's take a look at the chat then. We're about to close, 42 seconds uh, on this period. Let's see if we uh, see some fair works. I'll switch over to the uh, liquidity map here so that we can all uh, witness the uh, the uh, liquidity arrival. You can see that like thickening up now on both sides. Uh, oh, there's with, so much buying right now. Yeah, going through 26. Uh, let's see if and uh, let's see if the NQ actually trades all the way up to that 95. That'd be funny. I would be surprised. 795 that would be the, that would have been the target there we go whoa did you see that big one <laughs> and 88 
89. Into the 90s. 19. There's another one. That's the 90s. There's wow. Oh, 95. 95 exactly. Look at that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. 90. Well, actually, it hit 97. Wow. Outstanding. That. Pay attention, everyone. You guys don't have to look at the screen, but look at it yourself. How that 30 minute candle closed. That's totally impressive. different from what you saw earlier, right? Because that was looking bearish. Now it looks absolutely bullish. <laughs> I've got a confession. Oh I've got a few Go micros open on my NQ, uh, <laughs> on my top step X, <laughs> and it's running, baby. <laughs> Yeah, you can't you can't ignore it man look at this this is crazy yeah. i wanted to open but uh, i can't i already made good money today. i made that, a lot that so. is mental into the overnight low on es brilliant the, the area once again but not oh yeah wow yeah <laughs> Boys and girls, I hope you've really enjoyed that. Look at that back test that of that big supply. Uh, Severin, when are you going to start using one tower? Because you're going to love this, mate. Look on a chat. Yeah. I mean, there's a little delay there, so but take a look at it. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, yeah. I've actually. I'll check it out at some point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Let me take a look at the chat. Uh, yeah, this is so nice. I mean, honestly, 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 like um, between us, all all three of us. These power hours, uh, you know, if I say so myself, are actually very powerful. Like we, um, you know, like to be able to commentate, take trades, finish green uh, in such hostile and volatile uh, markets, uh, NQ, ES, you name it, we're, we're there. We're, we're trading the micros, the minis, um, you know, going, going over the charts, you know, explaining what's going on. Uh, Give us a thumbs up on the chat if you're enjoying this, because I think it's uh, really nice. I mean, you've got the top panel there. Let me just bring the coaches back. Let me see if there's a way to bring you guys back all together. Maybe that's Severin myself. Um, there's a... <laughs> that way. I'm not sure how you do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if... Uh... Do I do this? No. Do I do that? Um, not sure. Uh, grid. Oh, there you go. On grid. Um, but yeah, now, honestly, incredible. Uh, look at this move. Like we, we're still going through that. That NQ literally hit that um, ninety. Uh, well, not ninety-five. But we're trading at fifteens now. Wow. Um, just wow. Just wow. Um, just very quickly, actually, while we're still here. So we've got gold uh, finishing red. CL finishing red. I love. I love this. Um, this little feature that we have here now on um, on Guantel, which is like the uh, the tree map, you can see, uh, yeah. So BTC closing at well, just about <laughs> next next to the open, really. Um, so yeah, very good. Let us know if you enjoy this, and I'll pass the floor over to you both for some final comments. Yeah, I I don't have too much to add actually. So I would just say that was a very interesting power hour. So also. Yeah, uh, obviously to you both, uh, that was an incredible performance. Very well done. And um, yeah, I would just say for the ones watching, I hope you all enjoyed this. And maybe you can take something from it, learn something, but also take some inspira inspiration from it. Because it was just one hour trading and I had the worst performance with a 400 bucks profit in one hour. And I would still say that is not too bad, right? That so. is amazing. <laughs> Good, that's 100K a year. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible, my friend. Honestly, I was just going through the comments. 400 bucks in less than an hour and call it a day. Yeah. Like I want to I wanna add uh, like one of those things that I remember seeing a lot in general chat. And I know we don't see that anymore. And I'm glad, but I want to address it because I know subconsciously people are still like that, right? Not in the negative sense, but I'm talking about the thought sense. And I'll explain in a second. And I'm talking about, you know, when you're choosing to go long or where you're choosing to go short and you're flip-flopping your ideas. And I want to be, I want to be clear, okay? If you're not, if your idea is not both directions in any given time, in my opinion, you're already wrong. You can have a bias. Yes, but just because you're short and then you automatically flip long because the market changes, that does not make you a bad analyst or trader. That actually makes you a good one if you have the correct 
reasoning so okay because i know i've read it in before it was like a few years ago so i don't think it happens anymore it's like oh daniel's long but now he's short no that's because the market changes like you got to go with the market and i've said it before your job is not to snipe the top or bottom your job is to t is to read the market and take a piece of that move when it happens like igor he he technically what i i don't know if where his entry was but he went with the strength and people would call that like a breakout trade but in reality the data is right there it, it's showing bullishness why would you not jump on and grab a piece the entry doesn't matter so much as as where you're exiting and where you're starting the tp and that is the most important like earlier when that short i took okay that could have went down a little more, but because I entered on the one minute, I'm only targeting one minute lows. And that's the most important, okay? And it's okay that you miss some of the trades. Like, I'm perfectly happy with $700. I would be happy with that for every single day, okay? To be honest. And everyone should be too. Now, that is scaled a little bit because we're more seasoned traders. So if you're at the range of $100 to $200, you should be happy with that. Because it's you got to start somewhere, right? And you get that consistency down, and you know, like your setups. And once you have that all down, don't ever forget the most important thing that we discuss here today: the multiple time frames. Because I want to reiterate again, that thirty minute was looking very bearish, and literally within five minutes, it just changed the entire game. And now it is now completely bullish. Don't ever ignore time frames. So don't localize on the one minute because I know a lot of you do. I know a lot of you guys trade CCTR, which is perfectly fine. But if that is your main screen and you're not paying attention to the higher time frames, you're going to find yourself getting chopped up, Gosh. especially the last three weeks. Yeah, 100 percent, mate. But yeah, good luck, guys. You guys have been amazing. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, great, great comments there. Uh, I was just going through a few of them. So thank you, everybody. We actually have quite a few people in the house today. So honestly, thank you very much, everybody, for being here with us. Uh, obviously, this is a, a few of many to come. Um, so yes, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back uh, for more Power Hour Trading from, from myself. Thank you. Peace. I'll see you tomorrow uh, in a chat. And uh, you too, boys. Thank you very much. Uh, final words? See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Perfect. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. And see you soon. Bye. See you soon. See